all right guys welcome back to the channel and today hey we got another no east no ac call what do you know that's a su surprise here in north carolina in the summertime but uh what in this video today what we're going to be doing is i'm going to show you how to uh check a evaporator coil um for leaks i'm going to show you how to do um my preferred method that i like to use uh, is an electronic leak detector uh, in my opinion, I think they're more accurate. Uh, I'm not knocking any other leak detection uh, methods. I know you've got a die you can put in there and use UV. Um, you can also, um, I, soap bubbles are good, but not when you're checking a, a big system like, um, like an evaporator. Um, electronic leak search, I feel, was the best way to go, but whatever way you, uh, you like to do, that's good, but I'm going to show you how to do electronic leak search. Now, soap, soap bubbles, um, when, you have, when you're taking, checking a whole system, that's um, not really feasible. But what I always do with soap bubbles is if I find a leak, uh, and it's pretty, and it, it's easy to get to, uh, I do use soap bubbles where my leak detector went off. little pro tip that if, if, you're, if your leak detector goes off uh, and you assume that there's a leak there, you can use soap bubbles to verify because when the soap bubbles get on there, that Freon will push those soap bubbles out and you can see it kind of bubbling up. So you'll always be sure that your leak detector is right um, so, because on these things, they, sometimes they do give false readings. So I use electronic leak detector. I can verify it with soap bubbles is basically what I do. So... Um, like I, like I said, you know, usually when you do a leak search, uh, you do a complete system. Uh, today, I'm only going to uh, be showing you how to do an evaporator coil. Um, because, I mean, you got to, I don't want the video to be too long. So, uh, I'm going to show you. And if you want to see how I do electronic leak search, follow me. And I'm always glad to show you. Let me get my leak detector, and I'll see you inside. All right, guys. We're back. I'm upstairs. I'm out of breath. This heck getting old and climbing all these steps every day. At least hopefully it'll keep me in shape, but I wish it would get rid of my big belly at the same time. But anyway, besides that, so we'll show you my leak detector that I use. Um, this is the electronic leak detector. It's called, I guess, a TIFF ZX. And here's the paperwork that came with it. But I, the making of this video, I've got this sleep detector quite a few years ago. They may still make it, I don't know. But that's the type of leak detector that I use. Just, you know, if you were looking for something sort of similar, so you'll know what my leak detector looks like. So, um, what we're going to do is let me go ahead. We go, thank goodness this is a walk in attic. Um, and to save time. I've already removed the cover, so we have good, let me get a flashlight, we have good access to our evaporator coil, so this leak detection, leak uh, search should be fairly easy, so uh, let me get everything together, let me get sit down, and we'll go ahead and get started. Hey, and just as a note, if your technician sweating in the attic like I am, and these attics are really hot, um, you know, it always takes time to get your equipment, get your tools, get your leak detector once you get to the, the home. Um, one thing you can do to kind of help cool your attic down is while you're doing all that, getting all your stuff together, go ahead and pull this, uh, this, um, this cover off. That AC will be coming straight out to where you're doing your leak detection. So if the attic's 115 degrees, maybe it'll cool it off just a tad bit uh, while you're doing your leak search. And uh, maybe you won't sweat as much. And uh, maybe you'll lose only 4 pounds instead of 5 pounds from all the sweat you lose. So that's what I always do when it's really hot. I try to... I try to uh, Try to get it as cool as possible before I start doing the search. <laughs> so, just a minute. Alright, I'm about ready to turn my leak detector on. Um, let me show you how this thing kind of works. The 
on button and you see our lights flashing it's in like a little warm-up mode right now in a minute it'll actually start beeping and how this thing works is it's got a little little hose here and you see it's got a little opening here let me shut that thing up All right, this little hose, this opening, what you want to do is everywhere on your coil that you've got a little joint, you want to take that little hose. I'm trying to do this with the holding the light and everything else. But you want to run your leak detector around each little bitty joint that you have around your compression fittings all here and you also want to take this and run it down so you can bend the the, the hose is bendable so you can bend it down to get into the tight places but you want to run this down all over your coil through your 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 lines that that go through your coil because you have lines going through this evaporator coil you want to run it all the way down now in the back if you see you also have YouTube's just like this over here in the back um, that's not going to be very easy to get to and a lot of times I mean you're going to try to get back there as much as you can luckily with a um, with a sniffer or electronic leak detector detector if you get close to it it will alert you to let you know if uh, you have a leak but the the only way you can fully 100 percent check every single inch of this evaporator coil is you would need to pull this evaporator coil out um, check everywhere every single tube um, really that's most of the time not necessary um, you know usually when you put it down and go around that um, that is sufficient but anywhere that we have that is accessible it's always good practice to check everywhere um, don't let me forget um, a pro tip when you start doing leak searches uh, if you've seen my other videos one of the first things I always do on a system is always look and always listen to what's going on um, a lot of times when I'm doing a leak and we find a system low in Freon um, when we have to do a leak search you know when a system leaks freon especially if it's a bigger leak you know you i mean that's quite a bit of freon coming out of the unit so what i always do when i pull it off before i do my leak search or anything i'll open everything up i'll turn the unit off i'll get everything quiet i'll put my ear really really close and if i can actually inside to where the evaporator cool is and i'll listen won't do anything i'll listen a lot of times you would not believe how many times I found this is you could hear pssst. and that's basically where that freon is actually leaking is leaking out and basically you can trace down that uh, that hissing noise and you can find your leak and like I said you would not believe how many um, times I found a leak just by listening and for a leak search that could it sometimes take you an hour hour and a half to two hours if you hear that leak and you can trace it down to that that hour hour and a half two hours went down to five minutes so just a pro tip always do that first it could save you time and money so um um what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and since we got everything set i'm going to go ahead and turn this on i'm going to try it's hard to hold this camera and the light at the same time but i'm going to do my best and I'm going to show you how I go down uh, the YouTubes and not YouTubes, the two, um, the U bins in the evaporator coil and, um, and how to do a leak search. Let's get this uh, thing, let it get steady. You got to take it away from the uh, unit at first to get a baseline reading. 
See the lights are going down. It's getting in a steady state. And what you want to wait for is for it to just do that. That small beeping. All right, we're at our baseline. So now I'm going to go ahead in here. I'm going to run it over my two bins. Each and every one that I can get to. I'll do the tops. See, so like I say, you ain't got to get exactly on top of it. We just want to hit everywhere that we possibly can get to. And this flu pipe's in the way. And always, it's 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 always when you're trying to do something, something is always in the way. Um, I tried to get this flu pipe off. It's kind of stuck. I didn't want to. To fight with it so but we got enough room to do what we need I'm used to that so we're gonna check every single bend everywhere so I try to get all that water off you always try to get as much as that off as you can you may not be able to get it and you see it's still it's still leaky I mean not leaking but it's still only um, that that slow beep that slow beep but when you free on is triggered you're here to go up and I go up to red and that go beep 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 to uh, let you know it's 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 leaking but I haven't found anything yet let's get a baseline so if you ever get a false positive and you know you see how that was going off more you can carry it away Recenter it, go back, and that way you know it's not, you don't have, you have not found a leak. Hmm, something triggered there, so let's take it away. Alright, let's get it back. Alright. So we're now we're baseline again. Now it triggered right here. Let's just see if this is a false positive. See that was a false positive. Nope. Nope. Well guys. We found our leak. Right here. Right here behind the... Uh, right here behind this line. And I uh, put my finger on it. And I uh, got oil and everything all over my finger. So basically we found the leak right there. Um... So this evaporator cool it does have a leak in it. Um, what I usually do is I will get soap bubbles and I will spray the rat right around there to verify that that um, um, that that leak is there. Um, I don't have to do it on this one um, because I mean I was able to feel the oil and a lot of times you know save you a little bit of time is you know always it's always good practice to spray them but if you have oil there and you feel it on your fingers I mean that tells you that 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 Freon is coming out but uh, knowing that we have a leak there I want to um, just go ahead and run this over the coil the fins uh, to show you kind of how I do that and kind of how I get to the back of it as well because I, I want to let's say we did not find that leak there um, how we would check the other part so, so let's do that You've got all this parts down in here. See, so I'd run my. Ah! Oh. Let's take this here. Maybe this coil has another leak. So if it goes off of here, we go back to baseline. 
let it zero out. So we're going to tear it down here. base out. I guess this coil has multiple leaks in it, um, but if you see what I did um, to make sure it's not a false positive, I uh, when I when it started going off like crazy, because it can always, if you get some water in it or something like that, it could go off. So what I did is always take my leak detector away from the unit to where it can get fresh air and pull fresh air into it, and then I carry it back to that same spot. If it goes back off in that same spot, we know we have a leak. To, to rule out false positives, if we take it off, let it zero out and everything's good, and we put it back in that same spot and it does not go off, that means it could have got debris up into our um, electronic leak detector and things like that. So always, always check where you're getting a leak at, you know, twice or three times, just to make sure you're not getting a false positive reading. So, um, as we continue, let me get my flashlight back out. What we would do is go down. We already know um, this coil is leaking, so I'm not going to go in depth on this evaporator coil. But you always want to check your, your compression fittings. You want to check the outside, where it's screwed in. You know, all, all around where the distribution tubes are going in and if anybody wants to know for future videos this is what's called a piston this is a piston you have a little piston inside here that meters your freon so if you want to know what a piston looks like that's a piston all right now on the coils of my evaporator this is kind of how I usually check those I will just run my leak detector down this way here or you can run it down like this, up and down. And you want to get each and every all over. You want to go to all the way to the end on your... So make sure when you do this, and basically since we know this coil is actually leaking, I'm not going to go through that entire grid. Uh, but I do, I just wanted to kind of since we found it, we know it's leaking, the evaporator coil is going to have to be replaced. Um, you want to span with your, with your leak detector all of this to make sure you don't have a leak there. Uh, so, and also you have another span down here. You want to get your leak detector down in there. You'll kind of bend it. You'll kind of get it like this. And you want to span this whole area of your coil to make sure you don't have any leaks in there. Now, how do I get to the back of there? So, what I'll do is I'll bend my leak detector like this. And I'll run my leak detector all back in here as good as possible. run it this way here all right we have a we're getting a reading of a leak here as well so what do we what do we do we let it zero out Okay, we're zeroed out. Now we want to make sure we didn't get a false positive. So if we put this leak detector back in that same spot and it goes off again, then we have a leak. Now 
they make sure to run all around in there. See, now that was a um, uh, indication of a false positive reading. We got a reading up in here. We got a reading there. And then basically we took it away, let it uh, zero out. We popped it back in here. Let me ask my detector. But we popped it back in here and we did not get a reading. So that tells me that leak detector had uh, pulled either some debris or some water up into it. And, um, and that was a false positive reading. So basically I've showed you a true positive reading, the how to find a leak. Um, basically we, we got a, um, a reading on our leak detector. We took it away. We let it zero. We put it back to where we thought the leak was. It, um, it rang again in the exact same spot. So that tells us it was reading Freon. We found two leaks on this evaporator coil. We found a uh, false positive with our, with our leak detector. And how we did that was we were running it through. It went off. We took it away. We let it zero. We carried it back. It did not go off. So basically, we showed you how to find an exact leak on an on, on a evaporator. And we also showed you a false positive reading and how to distinguish between both of them. So, uh, so yeah, man, I just um, check as much of this evaporator coil as you can anywhere you have a copper line, uh, anywhere you have any weld joints or whatever. Uh, always... It's a good practice. I would always check my my weld joints here where they welded the line set in, and um, and basically that is a complete uh, evaporator coil leak search. So um, so I'm gonna go ahead and button this up. I'm gonna let the customer know um, that they have a, the unfortunate news that they have an evaporator coil bad. Kind of see what they want to do with it. Um, know this is an older unit. I don't know the exact age, but it is close to 20 years old, if not over. Um, I would definitely not suggest putting an evaporator coil in, into a system of this age because, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of money to spend on an evaporator coil. And let's say, you know, next year your compressor go out, and this is an R22 unit. And this is just for, for your knowledge. Let's say we put an evaporator coil in an R22 unit. And next year, their compressor goes out. You will spend, what, $1,500, $2,000 for a compressor. And it would be more advantageous to replace that outdoor unit. This coil does not work with R410A. What do all the new units come with? 410A. Um, so, if you, if you go ahead and recommend replacing it now, and that customer would have wasted whatever it is to do an evaporator coil, when they could go ahead, uh, replace the system at one time, have peace of mind that they ain't got to worry about it. They have a warranty uh, because the thing is, this is an old unit, old evaporator coil. Your outside unit is old as well. Who knows, you may have a leak in there next year. Um, so this would be a perfect one to recommend replacing. So with that, guys, um, I'm done. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Um, I may have missed something, I'm human, um, I may have misspoke a couple times or whatever, but um, if you learned anything, please comment below, uh, let me know what you think, as always, please be kind, um, and uh, I'm kind of, I'm trying to hope I'm getting a little bit better at these uh, videos, um, trying to, I mean, because I'm still new to this, but I really enjoy uh, showing you guys what I do and uh, I know and uh, I know what it was like when I was learning heating and air conditioning and um, a lot of people didn't wouldn't sometimes didn't want to teach you how to do something because they think well if you know how to do it they won't be needed as much so that you know or they try to rush through it and don't teach you the right way I'm trying my best to show you the right way sometimes I may 
miss a step. I, you know, I'm doing this live, so, you know, I've got a lot of knowledge in my head. But, uh, but you know, if I miss something, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll try to get it on another video. But, uh, as always, please like and subscribe my channel. Um, that means to me a lot. At least shows me that you appreciate what I'm doing. And uh, with that, I'll see you guys on the next video. I can't wait to show you and teach you something else. See ya.